Mr. K released by Matei Vishniak, translated from the Romanian by Josefina Comporale. Chapter 1 One fine day, Kosov J found himself released from prison. It all started with the rattling of the chains that secured the two locks on the lid. Then the doors at the very end of the corridor were flung open. Lastly, there was some muttered swearing, followed by the creaking of the breakfast trolley. But only when the two elderly prison guards walked past Kosov J's cell without even breaking stride did he realize that something unusual was about to happen. In the first few minutes, Kosov J was deeply confused and somewhat offended. This was the first time that Franz Hoss and his deputy Fabius passed by his cell as if he, Kosov J, wasn't even in sight. He could tell that, as usual, the flaps of the slots for the food trays were being opened one by one, and that all the other familiar noises were punctuating the very particular ritual of breakfast time. Old Franz Hoss kept on howling and smashing against the metal doors. Fabius, at the end of his rope, as always, carried on mumbling and complaining about the prisoner's stench. This was followed by about five minutes of silence. Only a few stifled splashes and the rattling of someone choking on his food broke the silence. Kosov J jumped out of bed and dashed to the door. He pressed his temple to the cold metal frame and listened. He felt crazy. All the other prisoners were having breakfast. All the other 49 prisoners in the other 49 cells were eating, while he, the 50th, in the 50th cell, had been completely ignored for some mysterious reason. This was the moment when old Hoss reappeared at the end of the corridor. The old prison guard had an unmistakable walk. He shuffled, and his steel toe plates kept scraping the concrete floor while the soles of his boots were scratching along the floor like sandpaper. Kosov J could hear these boots head towards his cell, as if they were two strange, slightly crippled, but nonetheless menacing animals. Good God, Kosov J said to himself, I hope this isn't going to turn nasty. He stepped back, sat down on the edge of his bed, and tried to hold his breath for a few seconds. Franz Hoss opened the door, slid to a halt on the threshold, and sat with a smile on his face. Good morning, Mr. Kosov J. What? Kosov J started and rose to his feet. Franz Hoss entered the cell and began to examine its walls. He walked up and down, shaking his head a few times. He placed both of his palms on the wall and waited carefully, as if he wanted to measure the dampness in a particular area. Then he let out a sigh and sat down on the edge of the bed. The weather is set to take a turn for the worse, the old guard announced with sadness. Yes, it is indeed, he added, scratching his beard. Kosov J thought he was dreaming. First of all, he could scarcely believe that old Franz Hoss was capable of showing such an unusual sight to himself. Tired, and as a result calm, sad, and due to the sadness also very warm and human. Moreover, it seemed inconceivable to him that the rancorous guard would be capable of such a relaxed and even chatty tone, a tone that practically encouraged conversation. This rain is killing me, Kosov J seemed to hear, as if in a dream. It never used to rain like this. What? Kosov J muttered again, startled. This was his second shocked what, and he felt a little ashamed of being unable to cope with the conversation. No, no, old Franz responded immediately, slightly invigorated. We are obviously never had rain like this before. 
terrible thought unfolding at breakneck speed started to blossom in the prisoner's mind. Maybe they want to kill me. Maybe they are all mad. Maybe my mother is here to see me, Kosovce heard himself thinking, and for a moment he was convinced that he must have been thinking out loud. But no, he certainly hadn't been thinking out loud, because old Franz remained seated on the edge of his bed and scratched his beard from time to time. It's already November, and soon it will be December, Franz Hoss mused and stared into Kosovce's eyes, as if he wanted to read the other's thoughts. But it didn't rain in September, Kosovce said suddenly, astonished at hearing himself speak. What do you mean it didn't rain? The guard snapped. It didn't rain, Kosovce insisted. What do you mean it didn't rain? The guard yelled in a blunt yet cordial tone. It didn't rain, Kosovce insisted, sure of himself. He would have liked to add simply, but didn't, considering that he had already gone too far. Nevertheless, he felt overwhelmed by happiness. He had managed to squeeze in no fewer than two watts, which meant that he had the courage to contradict the old guard twice. Now, Kosev Chase said to himself, he's welcome to go ahead and hit me. But Franz Hoss didn't hit him. Instead, he lowered his gaze to the floor with the expression of a man worn out by toil and advanced age. All of a sudden, Kosev J felt sorry for the old prison guard. He almost regretted his insistence on it didn't rain. What was the point of troubling an old man? Then the sound of jumbled words coming from the corridor caught his attention. Somebody was dragging himself along the row of doors. It's Fabius, Kosev J realized, and an unpleasant thought stuck in his mind. It's Fabius, the old guard confirmed, as if he had heard the prisoner's private thoughts and wanted to reassure him. Good morning, Mr. Kosev J, Fabius said as he appeared at the wide open door. Kosev J nodded and stared into nothingness. Ultimately, prison guards could get away with whatever they wanted. If the two old men felt like greeting him in this cordial way, there was no stopping them. By the same token, if the two guards wanted to beat the living daylights out of him, and after each blow wish him good morning, Mr. Kosev J, no one would have been able to stop them. On this particular morning, however, Deputy Fabius and his boss, Franz Hoss, seemed to have no such perverse intentions. Fabius continued to lean against the doorframe, looking bewildered, as if he wanted to enter but was too embarrassed to do so. A few moments of silence followed. Fabius fished out a pack of cigarettes and weighed it in his palm before handing it over to Franz Hoss. The old guard pulled out a cigarette with an expression of profound gratitude. Would you care for a cigarette, Mr. Kosev J? Kosev J registered the question and felt as if he was in the grip of a hurricane with his head submerged under water. Something baffling was unwinding, something extremely unpleasant, like a, walk, a waking nightmare. It's better this way, he could hear Fabius's voice. The two guards lit their cigarettes, and Kosev J realized that Fabius was about to put the pack back into his pocket. His bafflement must have been interpreted as a refusal. No, no, Kosev J hastened, I, I want one too. Smoking is a curse, Fabius observed, holding out the pack of cigarettes especially when it's humid. I agree, Franz Hoss confirmed. Do you? Fabius turned to his boss, smiling. I do indeed, Franz Hoss endorsed his colleague, and Kosev J caught a glimpse of a fantastic image, the two guards smiling at one another in full agreement, which clearly made them both happy. Really good, Kosev J said, pointing at a cigarette. 
mainly because he felt obliged to share this moment of harmony. I have more, Fabius responded. Do let me know if you want another. The cell quickly filled up with smoke. The cigarette made Kosev J even dizzier, and his legs started trembling. His heart was pumping faster and faster, yet still carried insufficient amounts of blood to his brain. This triggered a staccato beat, as if someone had been frantically chopping onions in a kitchen. Kosev J wondered whether his heartbeat couldn't be heard a little too loudly in the cell. He would have liked to sit down on the edge of the bed, at least for a minute, but was unsure how to ask for permission. Franz Horst giggled. Fabius took two steps forward, stopped in front of Kosev J, and patted him protectively on the shoulder. A second later, all three of them were sitting on the edge of the bed, smoking. Kosev J couldn't recall ever having felt so relaxed and so protected. In fact, he would have preferred to die, to make this sensation last, or to hold on to it forever.